Guten Abend. Prost. Football. Oh, yes. Exciting to wake up to major team sports. This is really what we had with the Bundesliga. You talk about any major European soccer league, the NBA, the NFL, Major League Baseball, Major League Soccer, big basketball organizations. And this is the first one to come in. The Bundesliga said it'll be back in the middle of March, middle of May, and there they were. So this soccer OG will be dedicated specifically to everything I saw. I saw three games, highlights of all the others to get an idea. And my Bundesliga knowledge has taken a major dip. I haven't kept, kept up, but that's going to change because uh, I will continue to watch. By the way, Friday, we have the Berlin Derby at that giant stadium. The Olympic Stadium. It's going to be crazy. But circle your calendars. That's the Friday Bundesliga game. So I record this as I do on Sunday nights. So we'll be looking at the eight games that occurred on Saturday and Sunday. So there's a lot of pressure coming on. But by the way, sports coming back everywhere this weekend. We've had our third UFC mixed martial arts event in a week in Florida. NASCAR racing in South Carolina. There's no rhyme or reason of where these places are, but then you get the Bundesliga to start as well. And again, not minimizing what's happening in other countries, but this is the sports that uh, really draws an international audience. So the Bundesliga and sports have come back, but it's a slow crawl when you look at some other stuff. These meetings with the Premier League, they said June the 12th, I believe, and that's kind of pushing back a little bit further. Steve Bruce says, can't see us until the end of June. Remember, the 14 of the 20 teams must agree they're looking to get group trainings, but doesn't look like June 12th is going to happen. And then La Liga and Serie A, it's, it's very quiet. So this is what we're going to have, and they're going to churn out some rounds here. They had nine rounds to go. So a lot, everything under the microscope here. So you held your breath to make sure there were no clipped hurdles. In the week going in, we heard about Dinamo Dresden and that whole team put under quarantine. Ahead of this opening round of the recommencement of the Bundesliga, Heiko Herlich, the manager of Augsburg, was supposed to be quarantined at the hotel, but he got out because he had to go to the supermarket to buy some toothpaste. That's what, make, broke, that's what made him break quarantine. Not to get a six pack, not to get some cigarettes, not to get a pizza, Toothpaste. Obviously a mistake. And you can tell by what we're hearing from the folks in Germany, they want this to be explicit. They want every check mark, every box to be checked here with regards to doing this so that they can expand. I would imagine they want to get these nine games under their belt and then worry about the next season, but they can pat themselves on the back and give a lot of inspiration to how you would do it. So Heiko Hurley got able to be there for Augsburg, who lost to Wolfsburg at home, whatever that means. Is a home advantage, but still, you get to stay in your own quarantine neighborhood. I wonder if this stadium is going to work. I, we, we hear other leagues are going to play at a, uh, a specific venue. I, I wonder if that maybe that's something they alter. I can't imagine they would do it at this point. So you had that with Heiko Herlich, and then the games get started. Remember, the last games were played March the 11th. By the way, yes, my Kraftwerk shirt on. Florian Schneider, rest in peace. A musical titan, no doubt about it. So the DFL guidelines, they had the most of 300 people allowed into the stadium. You know, if we can look for something, I, again, it's probably too late, but if you could get like 20 super fans that would agree to be quarantined and get them in there and create some atmosphere, it would be fantastic. The lack of atmosphere was pretty jarring. There's no doubt about it. You're never going to get used to that. You can do some things here and there. But uh, it, you'll, you'll, it's never going to get over it. You're hoping this works so the payoff at the end. And some fan bases, the ultra fans, are a little upset with the way things are going, but that's the way it is. After all this round, there's a few, a few subjects we could discuss. What about officiating? So I would listen to one game. I think it was the Bayern game. Uh, they were victorious, so they remained top of the ladder. The officiating will improve because you don't have that home crowd trying to you know, influence the officiating. You don't have to do that, so you can make every decision with a clear mind. Not that referees didn't do that in the first place, but it makes the job tougher. There's no doubt about that. So I don't know how that's going to play its role. I know there was a VAR decision that I disagreed with right out of the jump, but there you are. 
I would imagine the officiating is going to be a lot easier. I think a lot more things they'll get into this groove once they realize there's not going to be supporters, but that's going to take a while for them to figure that out. So you had that, the substitution rule, where you're allowed five substitutes. And remember, they're going to be pumping out these games, nine games. They're going to have a midweek round coming up in a couple weeks. You figured down the road they would start using the substitutions. However, and I was surprised by this, six teams... Of the 16 teams that played, used all five subs. Many more used four. There were some games where they used 10 subs. Curl Mainz, 10 subs. So they used it all. So clearly, the fitness and protecting some players, and a lot of them were in the attacking end, you want to get those fresh legs, was used pretty liberally. So it was interesting to see that. The big story, I mean, some of the teams making some good performances. I think if you're Hertha... We'll get to Hertha in a second. Or Dortmund, you got to be real happy. Bayern Munich won their game. But the big story coming out was there were social distancing plans for celebrations, and you saw them being honored. But one team didn't get the memo, and it was Hertha, and they scored three goals. And they broke social distancing laws or rules, however you want to do it, on all three goals. They were embracing. There was one where there was a giant group hug. It looked to me like they just didn't get the memo. Uh, their manager... Uh, was it Bruno Labadia would say that's a natural act you can't really suppress that and I think that's true but if the other teams figured it out you got to be careful so that's why whether you are Heiko Herlick for getting toothpaste or if you're the hair to support players you can't screw this up you've got to play by the rules and I'll give you this quote to be abundant to make this point abundantly clear Marcus Soder who is the Bavarian minister the possible to successor to Angela Merkel as chancellor said this, and I'm sure got a little lost in translation, about the Hertha celebrations. I did not like that, he told Sport One. They should at least be more careful in the next couple of weeks. Other clubs did not have these problems. So, look, I, at this point, Germany, this weekend went great. He had some injuries, which were a bit of a concern, including Gio Reyna. We're really disappointed. He was going to get his first Bundesliga start. Instead, he had to come off after warm-ups. That is a bit of a concern. You, know, you need bodies to play this. This is a team sport. But everything went pretty well with those, these two and a few other quarantine concerns. It can't happen. They want zero. They want zero percent issues. And I think they're going to get it. And I would encourage the teams to do it because you've done all the hard work. Now you've got a game under your belt and you'd like to see it do it. And then they'll ease things a little bit more. These are so magnified, these games. If you look at Christian Seifert, the CEO of the Bundesliga, a guy who deserves a lot of this credit, he said the Bundesliga remains, quote, on parole. And we just want to be here and want to deal with hope. And I think we have a lot of that. Herta, I like the celebrations. I like to be the rebellious type, but it's not worth it at this point. But a good opening act. I enjoyed the games. My good friends on Fox Deportes crushed it. With the German announcers there speaking English, they lose a little in translation. But still fantastic. It was good to get the sports. All Saturday and Sunday sports. Thank you for watching the Soccer OG. Let's keep it going. Subscribe. Subscribe. It's the word for the month of May. Subscribe to the Soccer OG and we'll keep it pumping out. And you'll get more cool shirts.